Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today you join me in Sandpoint, Idaho, the birthplace and manufacturing location of the beautiful and very, very well versed Kodiak 100. There she is down there. We are stationed at uh, Microsoft's interpretation of the Kodiak factory here in Sandpoint and we're going to give this aircraft a thorough shakedown starting as we always do with textures then taking a look at the flight model of the aircraft i am very impressed with this aircraft and i'm assuming a lot of you will be as well so without further ado let's begin our review so beginning with textures this is arguably i think one of the best texture wise aircraft that i've seen third party in the sim um, it's second to none. Uh, I'll give a little bit of spoiler backstory for those of you guys. This is my second attempt recording this video. So if you're seeing it, cool, it only took me two tries to do. And uh, in the first video, the only places I really could find any sort of discrepancy for textures was one at this gear fairing here. It kind of falls apart. And then up at the, where was it? It was somewhere on the tail here, I think. Uh, I'm not finding it now. Oh, it was on <laughs> it was on the static wicks right here. Other than that, I struggle to find anywhere on this aircraft where textures don't match up with the rest of the quality of this aircraft. And those of you who have been watching for a while know that that's one of my big gripes is when aircraft have really good texturing areas and then a no, well, I won't say a whole bunch, but a significant amount or at least a noticeable or texture somewhere else so i'm happy to report this aircraft is not in that category whatsoever i mean pretty much anywhere you look this high detail we're not going to pass the patented uh sample test this being a turboprop a pt6 turboprop but you do have really nice modeling behind the cockpit of air vent ducting if you had a camera set up there as well as the engine inlets actually go all the way into the aircraft. So if you had sun shining inside of there, you'd actually be able to see a very realistic, uh, did I say inlets? That's the exhaust. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, I, I, I don't know. The textures are great. There, there's no other way to put it. The textures are great. All of the letter texturing is good. super fine attention to details and all of the lighting and that sort of thing. And this is in 1440p is what I'm going to render this out to. So, you know, for those of you guys playing in 1080, this aircraft's definitely going to do good for you. Those of you guys in 1440, this aircraft's going to do good. And I'd be willing to reckon even in 4K for a lot of you guys, this aircraft is going to do very, very well in the textures and graphics department. You've probably noticed by now, but we do have uh, some sort of anti-ice control on all of our leaning edge surfaces. There's our horizontal and vertical stabilizer. Obviously, we have the wing, the wing root, and then as well, or I'm sorry, the wing uh, support there. And then as well, the uh, leaning edge of the main landing gear. So very, very, very cool. There are four variants of this aircraft available. There is the variant that we have here, the... Uh, Kodiak 100 with the big chonky Tundra tires as well as the underneath inline cargo pod and then subset variants of that meaning you have a variant with the Tundra tires without the pod a variant with your regular tricycle landing gear with a pod and without a pod and then shortly after this aircraft was released there's actually a amphibious version of this as well and we'll take a brief look at that as well. One other cool detail, and this isn't really directly to, directed to the uh, Simworks Studios crew. I mean, this is just how the aircraft is, and they did a good job of modeling it. But you may notice that I've got a asymmetrical leading edge in my uh, wing there. And for those of you who don't know, that is for stall protection. So what ends up happening on this aircraft, just a little bit of know-how for you guys, then we'll jump inside, I promise. Um, but what's designed to happen here, and you even have some vortex generators on the inside portion of the wing as well. What's designed to happen is this inside portion of the wing, because the, is it came, yeah, well, I guess the camber and the cord line is different because you've got a much more aggressive 
um, leading edge there. So yeah, this probably would affect your camber and your core line, but the inside portion of the wing is going to stall first is what this design is for. That being so that you still have some aileron control as you're approaching a full wing stall. That's the whole design behind it. We've seen it on several aircraft like the Cirrus SR series. I think the 20 and the 22 have it and there are various uh, variants for each. And we have it here on the Kodiak as well. But that is enough blabbering for me from the outside. We'll go ahead and take a look at the inside of the ca cabin and we'll take a look at some of the internal and external lighting and then we'll go through a startup and uh, do a short flight. And here we are aboard the Kodiak 100 now inside of the aircraft. The soundscape is very good for all of the uh, controls and that sort of thing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn up the sim as we do. And I'm going to mute myself and we'll just take a listen to uh, the different things as I click and actuate them in the cockpit. So all in all, very nice soundscape. I do love the individualistic sounds inside of the aircraft. You know, it's not just your standard generic clicking sounds. Um, let's go ahead and get some power on the aircraft. Um, then we'll take a look at lighting inside and outside. I'm actually going to turn up the sim again, just so you guys can hear some of the other ambient sounds that are going on as I do actuate our different switches. So right now we're in a... Uh, um, Primary battery only state, if I turn on my auxiliary bus, that'll turn on my climate control. And the climate control sounds are fantastic. Sounds like you don't get extra sound with the heaters. But that's just a quick way to warm up the cabin should you want to. I'm going to go to 69 and 71. I'm going to shut off the aux bus. And then we'll take a look at some of our lighting inside and out. So there's a very reasonable view of the panel lighting. Several different adjustment zones. This is utilizing the, um, I believe it's utilizing the default baked in um, G1000 suite, maybe with a modification here or there, but for the most part, it is the default suite. It's detailed to the point this aircraft that you can even move and point every single vent in this aircraft, and that includes the ones in the rear. Every single one of these vents that you see, you can move around. And you can open them and you can close them. It's it's amazing. You've got individual lighting for the overheads, obviously, the whole way down the cabin. And then if you want to do a floodlight sort of situation for, let's say, boarding or deboarding, you can do that as well, which lights the main lights there. But again, looking at textures, the textures look amazing. Your circuit breaker panel down here looks very good, and each of these is actually individually clickable. I checked them out, and they actually do shut off the systems that they're supposed to, which is awesome. Let's take a look further back in the cabin here. And right now we have the uh, Summit interior. There's three different interior types for this aircraft. You have the Summit interior, which we have here. The I'm sorry, we're rocking the Tundra interior. And then there's the Summit interior, which is more of a uh, shuttle type um, instead of the nice, more comfortable premium seating configuration you see here. You actually have a uh, 
all forward facing seat set and then there's the empty cargo configuration where there's no seats in the rear so it's like a pretty nice place to be if you ask me we'll uh throw on a few lights here head back to the front of the cockpit and then we will uh, take a look outside as well so let's take a look at the external lighting uh, right now we have our beacon and navs on and for the most part, I think the lighting suite on this aircraft does look very good. The beacon, I actually do want to point out some really nice detail on the beacon. I did that last video and I forgot to do it here. The beacon is actually made up of a string of individual LEDs and they look amazing. They all individually light up. I couldn't be happier with a beacon. The only gripe I have with this aircraft as far as the lighting situation is the LOD. Um, and let's, let's turn on our taxi light, for example. So on our taxi light here, and we can actually do it with a taxi and nav, we're obviously pretty close to the aircraft right now. Um, as I come back, that light just loses almost all of its power and intensity, and it's even more pronounced with the uh, landing lights, which I actually have to go inside to turn those on because, oh. Because this aircraft has a three position landing, light uh, situation but again you've got really nice powerful coronas here but as you zoom out a little bit they completely and totally trail off to next to nothing which is unfortunate let's go ahead and shut those off strobe lights are a similar story i do like the washout both on the ground on an, and on adjacent buildings as you can see here the one complaint I do have is the actual admission point of the strobe has no corona effect. And I don't know for certain about the Kodiak, um, but I'm fairly certain it has an LED. I think it's a Whalen LED lighting package, actually. I could be mistaken on that, so uh, don't fully uh, vest it. But my gripe here is this blink intensity reminds me of that of what you would get off of an LED. So if they were doing an LED type light i would like to see it a little bit slower to better represent um kodiak aircraft that i've seen in real life with led lighting so that is going to wrap up our texture look around we're going to go ahead walk through a cold start of the aircraft get taxied out onto uh well runway this and um, the real world is a hard surface but uh flight sim said otherwise but nonetheless we're going to go ahead get started and uh, get underway here all right, running through a cold and dark uh, startup, and I'm going to leave the sim just a little bit higher for now. I'll turn it down as we uh, actually transition to flight so you can hear myself a little bit better. But I do want you guys to take in the soundscape of this aircraft is amazing. It's second to none, in my opinion. Um, so first thing we're going to do is uh, come up to our fuel shutoffs and turn those guys on. You saw me waggle our right one before as we were uh, getting uh, some sound clips for the interior. Then we're going to come down to our firewall here and close the shutoff valve for the firewall. And then we'll turn on our main battery. I'm going to hide our yoke here. And then all of those sounds come back to life again, sounding amazing as usual. Nav and beacon can come on. Prop's going to go to the full condition. It's already halfway there. And then, the startup is your standard uh, PT6 startup. So we're going to go to 14% on our NP. And then we're going to introduce fuel to the low idle. You can just barely make it out there to the low idle condition there. Um, there's a detent, so we're going to go to that detent. So we're going to go aux pump to standby, ignition on, and start at a high. already past 14 so we'll throw in fuel and there's 53 percent starter can come off ignition off and then we're going to turn on our generator and alternator to kill that battery discharge and our two buses both avionics and auxiliary can come online that's a startup in the Kodiak. We're done. It's, it's started. We'll move our uh, condition lever to uh, 
flight idle as we're getting ready to uh, taxi out here. And we'll throw on some heaters. So I do suspect it's a little bit cold. Interesting, it's not detecting like no Celsius. Normally, you would have a readout to coincide with your uh, set point, but right now it's got a lot of work to do to get the cabin heated up, so we will leave it to do that. Now that we're started up, we'll turn on our pitot tubes heat and set our engine inlet to bypass. Now, I can't speak specifically for the actual Kodiak, um, but from my knowledge, all of our uh, PT-6 variant aircraft, so think your TBMs, um, some King Airs, and that sort of stuff, you're going to actually want to taxi and take off with your inertial separator, or in the case of uh, this aircraft, your engine inlet, uh, I don't know if it's a diverter valve or whatever, um, set to bypass, just in case you get any fod or a lot of water or something, it's not going to harm your engine. Um, and once we get clear of uh, potential icing conditions, we'll go ahead and uh, set that back to normal. But uh, that's about it for the startup, so we're going to go ahead and quickly set up our autopilot here. I've kind of been doing that in the background while I've been talking. That should be all we need, so let's go ahead and uh, release our park brake here, and then we will get our uh, taxi lights on, park brake off. Probably going to need a little bit of forward uh, momentum just to get us moving here. Um, but normally, just like you would expect under a normal PT-6 load, the aircraft would 100% uh, move on its own. Let's give her a little bit of throttle make sure our park brakes are off. They are. How cool is that landing light pulse effect? Just the landing light effect period looks very cool. I like those individual spots that you get. I think that's awesome. Pops can come down to 10. We're gonna take off position rather. Once we get out on our uh, runway here, we will uh, take a listen to the engine sounds from the outside because it sounds just as good from the outside as it does the inside. And then we're going to showcase some of the stole capabilities of the aircraft. We're obviously well, well down the runway here, and I'm more than confident enough that we can take this aircraft off within this range here. So let's go. Brakes on. Park brake online. We'll take a listen outside. We'll do a little bit of a throttle up in low idle. And we'll come back to beta. This aircraft is power back capable. Bring the motor to high idle. Sounds amazing. We are going to turn it down just a little bit so I don't have to yell over the aircraft. Oh, this aircraft does does warrant a little bit of extra volume as compared to normal. So let's go flying landing lights to pulsar, strobe lights on, park brake released. And we're rolling already. Let's add in some power here and get this Kodiak airborne. Our rotation speed is only 60 knots indicated. So I'm more than confident that we'll be able to uh, get this airplane 
Pass that, add in a little power, add in a little power. There's 50 knots. A little bit of blowing wind. There's in through 60 now. Rotate. Just like that, we're in the air. No sweat. And with more favorable wind conditions, it would be even easier. Alright, autopilot on. We're only going up to 3500. It's a very, very short flight. We're just hopping across this little uh, water feature here. Let's take a look outside. Near bird strike there. That's okay. So let's see, what is our outside, outside air temp? Zero Celsius, so we'll go... Wing light's on, that's what I was toggling earlier. The wing light effect is very nice as well. They live in the doors in case you didn't see it earlier. And we're rounding out our altitude now. So just a little bit further for me to go, this is our destination airport here. It's a very, very tricky airport to get into. Um, it's not lit or anything like that, so it's uh, going to be a visual approach, and then we're... Uh, you'll see when we get there. I'll catch up with you guys then. Alright, and after only just a couple moments, we are coming into our final approach. So it's a really tricky... Uh, runway to try to get into here. So this is our runway we're shooting for, and then we've got to taxi up this big, huge hill here. Um, so I'm going to start looking outside here. We're going to shut off our autopilot. And we are going to maintain high, because if you look at our radar altimeter... Where'd you go? We're just a 1,000 feet over the ground, even though we're 3,500 um, MSL. So we should be a beam that runway now. We're going to do one overflight. There it is down there. And then we'll check our winds. That's a nasty cross when we're going to be fighting on the way in. That's fine. And we'll shut off the flight director too. Put in one notch of flaps. And that's one thing I do love about this airplane is the way that the flaps pull you up. And what I mean by pull up, it's a, it's a UK term. It, it basically means stop. Um, but you can do some extreme, extreme angles towards the ground in this aircraft and be totally fine. I mean, I've got one notch of flaps in now, and as you saw as I came off the power, we went from our VFE to below our maximum extension speed for flaps, so. So it's looking like a direct crosswind no matter how you cut it. There's a slight headwind in the, op in the opposite direction that we're going now. Um, so we'll try and utilize that, but look at that slope of the runway coming in. You can see it both on the synthetic vision as well as, uh, well, outside world. So, it's going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. We'll keep a close eye on our AOA indicator. Swing her to the right a little bit. Get off center, and then we're going to do a tight left-hand turn to bring us around for the final. Not worried about gaining too much altitude. I'm significantly worried about the ladder. Here goes our left-hand turn. We'll start dropping a little bit of altitude here as we do. Put in another notch of flaps. We'll keep some power in. Looking for the feel. I think it's right on my beam here. There it is, visual. Start rolling power back. We're looking for 108 knots, I believe. 108 indicated for full flaps. Don't fly into the ground. And there's that cool landing light effect. Keep some power on as we come in. It's going to be a dicey one, that's for sure. We'll get her down. 
and we'll throw in max beta and some light braking to help us stop. I think we're going to overshoot, unfortunately. This is a slippery surface. Yeah, braking is ineffective. Ineffective, ineffective, ineffective. But because we're in a turboprop, look at this! You just, you just go back? Easy peasy. I just moved my head like I had track IR on or something. So definitely not the most comfortable landing, but definitely uh, a safe one in my opinion. Next on our bucket list is to get up this huge hill that you see there, a BMR wing. That's going to be an interesting one. Bring our... We're fighting the wind uh, even coming off of here. I'm getting uh, pretty heavy crosswinds. Bring the engine back to a low idle. It is a little bit finicky because basically you have to come, whatever your axis is for mixture, you have to come right off of that uh, stop point. If you're too low, the engine will actually cut out. So power up here a little bit. Get her moving. Show you guys a little bit of climbing that hill and then uh, we'll go take a look at the Anfib variant of this aircraft. as good as we're going to get, so we'll uh, start our turn in here. If you listen closely, I'll turn up the sim again so you can hear. As I change the engine RPM, you can actually hear the uh, high pressure lead valve change. Let's take a listen. got no nose gear authority right now yeah the airplane's just it's just going back back down the way it wants to go and because I'm slow I've got no rudder authority this is a bad idea this is a bad idea all right let's get some braking on here don't run, don't run away too fast I do like a slightly higher uh, seating position myself, something kind of like this versus the default of down here, so kind of helps you see a little bit better. Still really fighting what I'm assuming are just winds battering the tail. We'll go ahead, uh, swing around over here, and then park. I do want to also point out, everything that I'm using today is part of the aircraft. There is no, um, I almost said FSLTL. There is no FS Realistic Pro or anything like that running in the background. So everything that you see is going to be exactly what you get with the aircraft. Super tight turning radius on this airplane, and I absolutely love it. Look at that. Look at that. All right, we'll go ahead and park here. Do a quick shutdown, and then take a look at the Anfib. Transponder to standby. Uh, what else do I not need right now? Landing lights are off. Cabin lights can go off. We'll leave the engine diverter valve and bypass. Uh, we can shut off our climate control. It did eventually bring our cabin temp to where we wanted, which is awesome. And you can hear the uh, sound difference from when I turn it off, even over the motor. Bring the sim back up again. Oxen avionics bus can go off. And then we are going to simultaneous, well not simultaneous, we're going to bring the prop back to the feather condition. Back to the feather, back to the feather condition. And then we're going to shut off the motor. How cool is that? Fantastic shutdown sound. 
You could even still hear the prop windmilling as uh, it was slowing itself down. And then a final shutdown of the master avionics and everything goes quiet. Off to the amphibian. And back again in the beautiful Kodiak 100, this time in the amphibious version with the summit interior. All the changes, there's pylons down there. There's pylons, obviously you have the um, wheel setup as well. That's one other area of improvement for uh, SimWorks Studios is the nose gear, or the, and I guess you can call them nose gear, the, the wheels on the fronts of the tanks look just a little bit, uh, kinda needs improvement. But other than that, I'm very happy with this. All of the detail on the pylons, or pontoons rather, looks very very good no real complaints for me so we'll go ahead and uh, go through that same startup procedure before and we'll get underway to our destination heading out of beautiful New York City already underway now in the Kodiak craft down. We did get a good listen to it before. We'll get turned out here. Water rudders down. Doing their thing. We should have enough distance to clear this uh, obstacle here. So, without further ado, the Kodiak 100 from the water. Just like that, we're airborne. Pito heat off, I can rectify that. I'm gonna go engine back into normal as well since we're well clear of that water. And we're gonna continue in route up to 6500 MSL. This gives us a chance to showcase these sun visors as well. They're three position sun visors, so you're not gonna have the same customization and customizability as you would get with like let's say the Cessna 414 or the uh, 310 they're still good you know some sun visor is better than nothing so you have the up position the down I had my harness locks on don't tell the feds the up position the down position and then there's a side position as well again you unfortunately can't maneuver this up or down from what I can see there's nowhere to click other than on the visor and when you do that nothing happens unless you move your mouse in which case you get this sort of rapid action stuff here so but I'm not gonna complain about it it's nice to have semi-functioning visors versus no visors at all there is also a little wing mirror here which unfortunately it renders like a super low poly version of what's below you um, but this normally would be used to see if you have your landing gear extended or not, in addition to our gauge here, which will also tell us the condition of our landing gear up for water, blue for water, down for a runway landing. But nonetheless, we're making good headway here. We're going to continue, and I will catch back up with you guys once we're uh, a little bit closer to our destination airport. 
So here we are at 6,500 feet. You may notice that I don't have a location anymore for my GPS. Because I overflew it a little bit. It's back behind us. So we're going to go ahead and shut off our autopilot and get turned around here. We're going to leave the engines exactly where they are. And we're going to do a steep approach in the, uh, I almost call it a caravan. Ha, <laughs> it went, well, okay. I like this better than the caravan. I almost said it wishes. And it, Anyway. Um, this is obviously a, uh, direct line competitor for the caravan. We're gonna get turned around here. I have a, uh, landing zone in mind that we're gonna shoot for. And we are going to fly an extremely steep approach nose down. Flare the last second and then, uh... come out of it. Six up. One notch of flaps in, engine back to idle. And just look at the airspeed bleed off. I know we have a nose high attitude. So 108 is my max extension, so that's where we're at now. We're gonna fly this thing in right around 108 knots. Look at our angle of attack. We are getting a little bit of airspeed, but I'm doing Minus 3,000 feet per minute right now, and still losing airspeed. That is incredible. That is incredible. I mean, these things might as well be air brakes. They're, they're twin use, air brakes and flaps. Which would make sense for the stole capabilities of the aircraft, I suppose. So just hold that best angle of glide all the way down, our VG. We'll go ahead and get lined up roughly for a due west approach. Beam the numbers now. We've lost 2,000 feet already. Over 2,000 feet. We are over 8,000 before, and now we're sub-5. I'm hoping as the air gets thicker... We will increase the uh, speed at which the aircraft slows. Alright, let's do a quick observational check. That beachhead right there is looking good. That beachhead there is looking good. I don't actually want to go up this big jetty over here. Um, just because I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have collision issues. In fact, this beachhead right there in the center of this screen, I think that's where we'll go. Once we've landed, we're ready to make our landfall. We'll do one orbit and a right hand orientation. Going to actually need to add some power back in and arrest our rate of descent. Copy five hundred. Lined up nicely with the wind. A little pre flare. And touch. Water rudders down. And so are we successfully in the Kodiak 100. Looking for our original intake spot. I don't think it's... Yeah, it is what's dead ahead of us. We're going to keep going there. Come back to idle. Low idle, rather. Don't hit the docks. Yeah, 
And as we come up on the beachhead, we'll transition from water base to amphib. We'll drop the gear. Looks like there's a nice rock for us to hit right there. Yep, there we go. Add some power in. Water runners in. And there we go. Land ahoy. One other small complaint I do have about this aircraft is there's no modeled nose wheel turning. Um, the wheels just say pointed straight ahead, but uh, we, 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 can, we can forgive that. For all of the other good this aircraft has done, I think we can let that go. Let's get turned around here and facing back towards the water. Is my park brake on? Oh, airplane just doesn't... Yes, I know. I did that. I know. Well, she doesn't want to move anymore. Maybe we bogged ourselves in. That's fine. So we'll shut down here. That's A-OK. -okay. So you guys, that is going to do it for the Kodiak 100. Absolutely fantastic aircraft. Um, definitely it's worth every single penny. It's not even that expensive of a... Edition. I think right now it's on sale for 19 euros. I apologize, I don't have the USD conversion for that right now. But a relatively cheap aircraft, and it does regularly go on sale as well. So if you're not wanting to spend that uh, amount of money, you don't necessarily have to. You can get it on a sale for cheaper, should you so choose. But I think it's worth every penny of the full price. But nonetheless, that is going to do it for this video, you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. And as always, take it easy.